This is Lesson 99, VHDL Example 66. And in this example, we'll write a VHDL program that uses the technique we described in the last lesson on integrating the data path in the control unit. Here's the GCD algorithm again. Remember the problem is with the while loop. And we saw that we could use this technique of using the rising edge of the clock as sort of simulating the while loop because remember on every clock pulse we execute this over again. Now the trick is we're going to set calc to zero to begin with and then go goes to one for one clock pulse. So if go equals one we'll initialize any signals and variables and then set calc to one. Then on the next clock pulse go has gone to zero so we pass the if and we go to the else if calc equals one or well, calc is equal to one now if we're done we execute this well we won't be done initially so we execute the algorithm statements and this keeps going on on each clock pulse corresponding to the while loop until the done condition is true when the done condition is true, we'll set done variable to 1, which is going to cause this output pulse to go high, and calc to 0, so that the next time through the loop, go is 0, calc is 0, and so we've stopped the algorithm. So let's see how this applies to the GCD algorithm. I'm going to call this GDC3. This is our third attempt at the GCD algorithm. Well, if clock and clear is inputs, go is an input, x in and y in will be the two inputs that we're trying to find the uh, co greatest common divisor of, done is an output, and then the 4-bit GCD will be an output. So, let's follow our technique. We'll define the signals x and y, 3 down to 0. Here's our process clock and clear. We've got a variable calc and done v. If clear is 1, we'll set x to 0, y to 0, gcd to 0, done variable to 0, calc to 0. Then on the rising edge of the clock, set done v to 0. If go equals 1, we do the initialization. x gets x in, y gets y in, and we set calc to 1. Then we leave on the next rising edge of the clock, Go is 0, so we go to here. Calc is 1, so we go to here. X is not equal to Y at this point, so we just execute our GCD algorithm. That is, if X is less than Y, then Y gets Y minus X, else y, X gets X minus Y. Eventually, X gets equal to 0, so we've been going through this while x is not equal to y, you see. When x is equal to y, then we're done. We set gcd to x, and then we set done v to 1. That's going to cause the output done pulse to go high, and calc to 0. So from now on, calc is 0, go is 0, done variable gets set to 0, so the output done has come back to zero, that is the done goes high for one clock pulse. So this entire uh, program here replaces the data path and the control unit and putting it all together is all replaced by this simple uh, algorithm just written as is. So this would be a big savings as if it worked and here's the simulation and indeed it works. Here's go. Go goes high to start it. We're going to take x in and y in to be c and 8, that is 12 and 8. So we want to find the greatest common divisor of 12 and 8, which we know is 4. So we start out on the next clock pulse. 12 is greater than 4, so we get 12 minus 8 is 4, so we have 4 and 8, they're still not equal, so on the next pulse we're going to take 8 minus 4, which is 4, now they're equal, so on the next pulse done goes high, and here's the GCD answer is 4.
So it just takes three clock cycles to compute the entire GCD using this technique and done goes high and we get the GCD uh, answer. Now it's interesting to compare the uh, FPGA resources that we used. Here's example 64 where we used the data path and the control unit and this is this current example where we just had the uh, one VHDL program. This new one used actually fewer slices, same number of 4-bit uh, LUTs, used fewer flip-flops, uh, it used a couple more I.O. flip-flops. The total equivalent gate count is slightly less for this one. However, the uh, maximum pin delay is slightly more. It's 2.3 nanoseconds for the uh, data path one and a little over 3 nanoseconds for this one. This means that the data path and control unit you could run at a higher clock speed uh, and have it execute, but roughly they're about the same. Now, to build a top-level design, you have to remember that Go has to be a clock pulse that just goes high uh, for one clock pulse here. So what you're going to do is we'll use this clock pulse to generate this go signal. So when you push button zero, button zero goes through the debounce. Remember we have to debounce these buttons. So when you press button zero, button D zero will go high and will generate a clock pulse for uh, the go one, which goes into go. Now the switches will be the two uh, four-bit numbers that you want to find the greatest common divisor of. We'll display those in the LEDs. And so when you press button zero, this will compute the GCD, and here you'll get GCD uh, answer coming out, and we'll display it on the seven-segment displays. So let's look at the top-level uh, BHDL program. Here we're going to use a, a component package. So instead of lift, listing all the components, we'll start putting them in packages as we talked about before. You say use, work, GCD, three components. So we'll put the components in there. So then in the architecture we can just list the signals and calculate clears, button three, uh, compute uh, X, the rightmost seven segment display will be the GCD answer and the switches will go to LD. And then here's the port map for clock div, for debounce 4, for the clock pulse. And here's our GCD. We'll use a 25 megahertz clock for its clock. A go goes to go 1. Um, X in will be the leftmost four switches. Y in will be the rightmost four switches and then done goes to done and the GCD goes to the GCD signal and then we have the port map for uh, X7 seg B. So this is the top level design. You can download this to your FPGA board and when you set the switches uh, and press button zero you should uh, observe on the rightmost seven segment display the greatest common divisor of your two 4-bit numbers.